Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with srlounge.com. All right, so while we're in this content area, there's two additional features I want to talk about, both of which are actually hidden right now. The first one we're going to talk about is the toolbar, and the second one in the next video we're going to talk about is the filter menu. So let's first get to the toolbar, and what we're going to do to access it is actually hit the hotkey, which is T, to bring up the toolbar. It appears right at the bottom of our content menu, and it gives us a bunch of extra options. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is shrink up my uh, display, my, my thumbnail size, and I can do so now not only by using the plus minus command, uh, but I can also just select right here for my thumbnails and I can just shrink up the size. I'm also going to hit tab to remove my left and right panels, as well as hit F5 to remove my identity plate. That way I have just a little bit more working space to show you guys how this exactly works. All right, so let's get started. The bottom left of the toolbar gives us another way of quickly accessing our different view modes inside of the library module. Now every single module has its own toolbar, so we'll go over each toolbar when we get to each module, and each one functions just a little bit differently based on that module. But for here we can see our different view modes starting with grid view, loop view, compare view, and survey view. And it'll actually tell us the shortcuts right next to them. So if you forget shortcuts, this is another way of quickly changing the view modes as well as viewing the shortcuts for those different view modes. So by clicking it, this will take me to the loop view, clicking XY is going to take me to compare view, and so on. Very simple, another way of getting into different views. Let's go on, and I'm going to actually hit Control D, and that's going to deselect everything. Command D on a Mac. All right, so let's go to the next tool on our toolbar, which is the Painter tool. Now, the Painter tool is actually really cool. With the Painter tool selected, we can have uh, just a variety of different options uh, that we can paint over our, our images. So we can select whatever we want to paint. It could be keywords, it could be labels, it could be flags, ratings, metadata, rotation even. Or we can select a target collection and paint those images directly into that collection. We're going to show you how it works with, uh, we'll do a flag system because that'll be really simple. We select flag, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to select, uh, we'll make it rejected. So anything that I paint over right now is going to become rejected. So if I click once, it automatically rejects an image. If I click again, it'll reject. If I paint, it's going to reject everything. So watch this. I can click and drag over all these images to mark them all as rejected. So we're essentially painting these different metadata settings onto our images. If I want to mark them all as unflagged again, well, I just go down to my options, switch rejected to unflagged, and then we go back and we paint over all of them again. So it's a quick way of applying these different settings to uh, your images. What we just did was a metadata or an attribute setting, but we can also apply fixes. So let me show you guys something. Let's just say we forgot to turn on the auto rotation in our cameras. I'm going to deselect the paintbrush tool. I'm going to select a grouping of images. We'll say, we'll select all these images and we're going to say that these were all incorrectly rotated in the camera. I'm going to hit control left, or uh, control left bracket or command left bracket on a Mac to rotate them all left and we'll say that this is how they came into Lightroom. What we can do is go back to our paintbrush tool and rather than having to click on each one or select them all and then click control right bracket, we can just go down to rotation, select rotate right clockwise, and we can just select each image and rotate it. We, uh, over images that are closely uh, grouped together like this, we can just drag over each one and it'll rotate each one of them back to normal. Again, one last one right here, and we're done. So it's much easier than having to find and select all the images and then apply a, a, a shortcut to it to rotate them all or just do them individually. We can do these kind of small little fixes quickly over a big group of photos with the Painter tool. All right, so let's place the Painter tool back, and let's go on to the next option we have, which is the Sort Direction. Now, the Sort Direction is basically just going to change how these images are sorted. Currently, it's based on a user order, but we can change this based on whatever we want. So whether we want capture time or file name or however sorting order we want, whether it's rating, we choose right here. So I'm going to say capture time. And then we just select A to Z or Z to A. So it's either backwards or forwards. So right now it defaults going forward. So for capture time, it's the earliest stuff first, latest stuff last. If we reverse it, then it switches it up. We can also do it via rating systems and select from A to Z. We haven't applied any ratings to this, but had these been one star, two star, three star, four star, it would sort these all based on that rating system. So this is another quick and easy way to sort your images however you like. Another way to access the sort menu also is through the view menu where we can see sort and get the exact same options right here. Select either ascending or descending, which is the same thing as A to Z. All right, so back to our toolbar. This is what we see for right now. Now, if we wanna see additional options, all we got to do is go to the right side of the toolbar, 
and we can select additional items to be shown on the toolbar. So let's say we want to show flagging. We also want to show ratings and color labels. We'll select everything right here. Rotate, navigate, slideshow. Now, from here we can also quickly apply these different settings to our images. So if I have uh, you know, these images selected and I forgot what the shortcut is to flag them, well I can just go down to my toolbar and now that the flagging option is available, I can hit flag as a pick or I can unflag it by clicking it again, or I can hit reject. So it's another way of quickly adding these different attributes to our images. We also have the purple option from here, which we didn't have with our numbers. If you guys remember, the, the highest shortcut for color labels was nine, which set it to blue. So this is another way of applying uh, purple to images where you, know, you previously couldn't. All right, so we also added the rotation options, so we can actually rotate photos left or right based on the groupings. Um, we can also go to a previous photo or to a next photo. Again, it's probably easier to use just the left and right arrows on your keyboard to go from previous to last, but you do have that option here. So you can customize what you want to view in this toolbar just through this arrow menu right here and selecting each item. Now typically how I like to use it is I like to have my painter. Um, my view modes I don't really care about because I know all my uh, view mode shortcuts. So I like to have painter, I like to have sorting, flagging, and rating, and then I remove color labels. Um, actually, we'll keep color labels, but I remove the rotate, navigate, slideshow, and the thumbnail size I'm always using plus or minus anyway, so I don't really need that either. So it's nice because when I look at my images and I'm actually rating, even if I'm using the shortcuts, even if I'm selecting P on an image, it's nice to have the toolbar present because I can see that that uh, keystroke was actually registered and I can see that the image was flagged just by selecting an image. So I know quickly if an image is rated or if it has a color applied just by looking down in the toolbar as it'll show each one of these uh, items that I, each one of these attributes that I apply to these images. You can also see it down in the film strip but they are rather small so it's kind of nice to be able to see it a little bit larger. So again hit T to toggle the toolbar. I'm going to hit tab to bring my left and right panel back and we'll go back to the top of our document and back to the beginning. And let's go on to the next tutorial guys.